Okay, guys. Um, let me add people in the meeting. Okay. The computer. Okay, guys. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Russell. Uh, Russell Follas. Again, for a new uh, live webinar about another important topic on how to pay less taxes. Right. And today's topic is uh, basically tax planning. A lot of people talk, uh, talk about tax planning, but most of the time we really don't know what, you know, what tax planning is. So today's topic is uh, tax planning. Right? Today's topic is tax planning. So what is tax planning and actually how like how does that help a business owner or a self-employer or even a single taxpayer? This is what we are going to discuss today, right? Yeah. We are going to discuss tax planning. We are going to see some type of example of tax planning or uh, the main focus on the tax planning uh, for businesses and for individuals as well. And uh, we are going to show a, a case study on, of one angle of the tax plan, how it can actually help uh, a business owner or an individual to save taxes, okay? So basically, uh, yeah, I'm going to explain what the tax plan is and give you uh, the main, the main, um, the main area where CPAs and tax professionals focus on helping the business owner. Yeah, whatever you are you get in, just mute yourself. Yes, just mute yourself when you get in. Okay? So it's really important. It's really important. Everything I have been doing since then, let me just try to meet uh, other people. Uh, Okay, yeah, I see a uh, lot people there talking. Let me see if I'm not mute myself. I think I'm mute. I think I'm mute. I'm mute. I was mute myself. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I hope everybody was here what I was saying. Um, we are on the Facebook Live in the meantime. We are on the uh, weekly Zoom meeting with the Facebook group that I have created to help small business owners to get funding. Remember, the ERTL and the PPP loan that was available for business owners. Yeah, we actually created a group to help other, uh, all these business owners who were struggling to find financing to survive during the COVID-19. So basically, as a bonus, I said when I created a group that uh, like a weekly, and I will actually provide them with some type of tip on how to actually even save the money that they are actually making in their business by actually using that strategy and that planning. So that's the reason why uh, every week in the, within the group we have this type of meeting or webinar. And sometimes I feel like I can also help other people. That's the reason why you have put this on live. But of course, this is only going to be for the first part. The second part is going to specifically uh, be uh, for the people within the group, within the Facebook group, because I have specific information uh, to uh, share with them, especially concerning uh, the loan, right? Uh, if somebody has a question, he may ask. Um, Yeah, sorry guys. I don't know what happened with the with the with the Facebook um, uh, broadcasting. So I think I was I was uh, at the point where I was trying to explain what the task planning is, right? So anytime, anytime you as a business owner or as an individual, right, within the course of your business or within the, your life. You are taking action with the intention of mind to save on taxes, right? But also knowing what tax law, what disposition of the IRS 
will help you to take that taxes. And most importantly, action taken during the year. I mean, during the year, not on April 15. That's the difference, right? Not on April 15. So that is what tax planning is. I don't want to give you a non definition, non tax definition, or account definition about what tax planning is, right? So, what do we even talk about tax planning in the first place, right? Why? Why do we even talk about that? We talk about tax planning because we live in an ever changing landscape, right? The law, the laws are amended. The tax laws are the tax laws actually amended like every year, basically. That's the reason why we will have new IRS um, publication before we actually start doing the taxes because there's always updates. Sometimes there's amendment, and we know that 2017 there were a new, complete new set of tax law, right? So that's the reason why the landscape, whether it's an economic landscape with the COVID-19 here or the political landscape in anywhere in the world. By the way, what I'm saying here could be applied anywhere in any country because there are many people actually watching this that are not even in the US. But the typical uh, case study that I will be showing is for the US uh, tax law, right? But in general, in general, like I said, what I just said about tax law to take action, to initiate, to structure, okay, I'm not going to go into the detail, yes. Any action that you take, that you think, okay, I'm going to do this so that I can pay less taxes at the end of the year. And you know what disposition of the law will help you pay that, that's, uh, that tax, that tax um, or save on that tax. Uh, anywhere in the world you find yourself, you can do that, right? Now, the, the problem with the tax law, the, the reason why we have to talk about tax planning, is because the political or economical landscape in, in most countries, right, changes. It's not always stable. Sometimes, uh, I mean, it will never be stable, right? So, not only that, but we say the tax law is amended. Company growth and net income changes, which has an implication, right? When your net income changes, the, your company grows, it means that your, your taxes will also increase. In order to not pay more taxes because of the growth of your company, you actually have to do something, right? And of course, as a result, your business uh, uh, liability will increase, right? You will, you will have to hire more people. An employee you have, is a liability. When you have an employee, that's a liability. You have to get uh, to get more loan, right? Because you want to expand. All of those can have a um, tax implication at the end of the year. So that's the reason why tax planning, we even talk about tax planning, right? And if you don't, if you do nothing as an individual, for example, um, what will happen? Or even within the company, if you do nothing as a company, uh, just as an individual, you may lose something like your house, right? If you, you owe the IRS and you don't know how to negotiate because you didn't know what to plan to help you owe less money on your house, the more money you owe on your house, it could happen that the government even takes over your house, right? You know that. Your business will actually run out of cash flow. If you don't plan, if you don't plan, your business may actually run out of cash flow because you'll be paying more taxes than you would have used within your business to actually the operation of the expansion of your business, right? You, you may even lose uh, your personal, your personal, uh, your personal asset, I say your house, but it could be everything, your, it, could, it could be, it could be uh, your car or your bank account. If you don't plan tax wise, everything happened in your life. Um, whether you are married or separate or divorced, it could have a tax, a tax implication in your life. So you always have to consult anything that happened during your life. You, so you have to consult, or if you plan that something will happen in your life, you always have to consult. Otherwise, the consequences are always greater than what you think you say by doing nothing. That is on the individual side. On the business side, if you're planning to open a new shop, 
to open, I mean to acquire a new business or to even sell your business. If you don't consult, because it doesn't just come all of a sudden that, okay, I'm going to sell my house or I'm going to sell my business. No, it's a process. You plan, maybe because you see a lot of losses, you have been accumulating a lot of losses, you think your business is no longer profitable. You will have to consult a tax professional for that, right? So the solution is what? A business must continually review its overall tax position. You always have to review your overall tax position because we just said that tax law changes. It even can make the tax law be amended. Even during the year, we saw with the COVID-19, a lot of tax law are amended, are updated, right? A lot of them. But if you have made a plan to do something and you stick on that, you are losing money just like that. And you will lose money. How do you really lose money? When somebody who can actually show you have you what you have lost as a money because you didn't adjust with the changing on the uh, political economical landscape, right? So uh, NGF must always review its expenses and income forecasting and takes proactive action, right? Individual must always, you know, review. And I think we already went through uh, so many uh, webinars where I was explaining how it's important to actually trace your expenses. Even at the individual level, you should always trace your expenses to know exactly what are your expenses. If you know what are your expenses for the month or two months, you will take action because you will discover a lot of expenses that are not really uh, needed, that were not needed, that you could do everything that without making them, right? And Or you could have known how to make them because one of the main um, uh, area of the tax planning is a structure. And we are going to get into that in, in a minute if you stick uh, on the webinar, right? When, when you trace your expenses, if it's, if it's possible, if, it's, uh, if it, it, it does with on the individual size, what about the business level? So any business can always or has always have to follow and trace daily with daily expense because tax planning is most, or most likely uh, about expenses because the, the way you structure your expense can give you a tax credit. Basically, that's what I mean. So, this is tax planning. So all of that is to actually planning your taxes or planning your activity according to how much you want to save on taxes, right? So to reduce your taxes, basically what you have to do is to plan, right? If you want to do something, want to pay less taxes, you have to plan. So what is the difference? And, 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 and no matter what your CPA or your tax professional or your accountant within your company, you have a company and you know, you have so many accountants, you have a, even a tax department in your company. No matter those people are, right? You will never, I mean, April 15 is not the time to actually do the tax planning. April 15 is not the time to actually take advantage of what was available to you during the year. April 15 is the time to prepare your taxes, basically. April 15 is not the time to uh, to actually, when I say, I mean the January to April 15, that period is the time to file your taxes. It's not the time to think about, oh, uh, I need to take this because your, your tax preparer will tell you, okay, this is an opportunity to you. And you say, yes, why can we take it? And he will tell you that you just cannot take it because it's something that you have implemented 12 months ago, right? And that you will see the result now. That's, and that takes, us, that takes us to um, talk about the difference between tax preparation and tax planning, right? What's the difference between tax preparation and tax planning? You have to know that tax preparation is a reactive tax strategy, right? It's just a reactive tax strategy. Um, they also call it um, after the fact tax strategy because during that time, you see as your, your CPA 
to say, oh, I need to take, I need to take a lot of deduction, I need to take this, I need to pay less taxes, I need to uh, get more refund, or I don't want my company to pay too much money. You tell them they are just reacting to what happened already, and they also call that after the fact. I think I said that already. It's called after the fact tax deduction. So it's a it's a reactive tax strategy. If I, it's an after the fact tax strategy, so it has limitation. So what it is in fact? In fact, it's what during the uh, pre tax preparation, your accountant or your CPA or your tax professional just record record what he does. What he records all the all the transaction in accordance to the tax law. So he goes through everything that you have done during the tax law and sees what is available that he can take. He doesn't make up anything. There's nothing that he can do at that time. Yes, there are something that are obvious that you that you may take, right? Your standard deduction, maybe you have children, you get credit for that. Maybe you actually um, you purchase a car, you purchase a car, you take you take credit for that. Take deduction for that. Yeah, those obvious deduction, he's going to take it. Or he's going to take them. Those obvious credit, he's going to take them, right? But I'm pretty sure, or most of the time, 50% of this tax strategy that are available to you are not taken during the tax preparation, right? And most some CPA will not even let you know. But I always tell my people, this is what you have lost by not implementing this strategy during the year, right? Some, Sometimes when you say that, they will ask you why, why can't you take it now? Why can't you do something now? I say, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. Some other people will have to make up something to make that happen. You go within the law. If you go within the law, I will actually uh, advise you on what to do so that next year what you have lost this year you will be able to take next year this is actually how i always see the thing so basically uh, the task the task the, the task preparation is a uh, is an reactive task strategy right uh, where uh, your task professional your cpa will just see what's available for you uh, as a contrast, as a contrast to the uh, tax planning, which is a proactive tax strategy, which is also what is called before the fact tax strategy, right? What's the difference? The difference between reactive and proactive is that in the proactive strategy, we are anticipating. We are actually anticipating. On what will happen if we do this today? Let me add this new um, member in the group. Okay, there are two of them. Okay, good. So yes, uh, at the tax on the tax uh, planning level, and uh, as opposed to tax. Um, preparation. The tax planning, your CPO or your tax professional, what he will, will be doing? He will be, uh, uh, the tax professional will actually review all your financial position, right? Your CPO will review all your income statement, all your financial statement. He will review all your income. He will review all your uh, expenses. He will review on the individual size. A possible event that will happen in your life. That's what he will do. He will review all of that, right? And he will actually customize a tax plan uh, according to your own situation. On the tax preparation, what you can take is, is flat. If you don't take it, you don't take it. It's most of the time, oh, I have to mute whoever just got in. Okay. Yes.
Yeah. So yeah, like we said, the 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 tax professional will uh, actually just give you everything everything that is finance, that is investment, that is uh, uh, future expenses, that is future income. Uh, that is on the business side. On the MGS side, same thing. They will see what are the potential life events that will happen to you. Are you going to move? Are you thinking about buying a house? Are you thinking about uh, getting divorced? Are you thinking about doing this? All of those, that's a task operation. Anytime, if you even feel like there will be a life event in your, in your personal life, you have to consult with the, task, with the CPA. Because so many people will be surprised with the outcome. Right? Or even at the end of the year, even though you want to sell your house, you have to consult with your tax professional to see what will be the what are the outcome if I sell my house like this or if I don't do this. Yeah, so so during that time, the, your CPA actually just go through everything that happened within your personal life or your business life and see what are the opportunities that he can do within the law to actually help you saving money. At the end of the year that is the proactive strategy of the tax saving as opposed to just wait on uh, january 1st um, to april 15 to actually scrambling to find you know a new white off for businesses uh deduction uh to find uh, credit uh as an individual level to start telling them oh i think i think i, I did this I, I have done that i fixed my house I wanted to take this. Yes, so that is tax planning basically, as opposed to tax um, to tax preparation. Now, uh, how long does the tax planning last? That's a good question. How long does it last? At the beginning, I was saying that the tax planning is. Uh, I was letting you know that the tax planning is an ongoing process, right? It's an ongoing process. That means. You have to consult your tax planning at least twice a year, at least twice a year, or maybe three times a year. At the beginning of the year, on the middle of the year, and end of the year. At the beginning, to actually see, like to lay down everything, all your individual financial position, or all your business activity, so that it will be planned accordingly. Because at the beginning of the year, the tax professional has can see from your financial uh, document, all the past activity, and he can forecast, and he can ask you, what do you think? Do you think uh, it's going to be the same, or do you think it's going to increase? Depending on what you think, maybe you want to spend more money in your business, right? You want to spend more money on your business, that means the, the, you, can, you are anticipating that there will be a 20% increase. That means the gross sales, we're going to add 20% to it when you are applying the tax strategy that will be uh, available to you. So that is basically what we do. So since it's uh, it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process. That's the reason why why because life situation changes, right? Tax law changes. Tax credit comes and go. I think we see that already. And that's the reason why you always need to consult at the beginning or worst case scenario at least during the year at least once. Because some strategy could be uh, created if uh, or implemented as if it was implemented at the beginning of the year, even though we are within December, right? So you always have to consult before you think about going to file your taxes. When you go to file your taxes, most of the time, it, there's not that much that you can do, right? So yeah, that is why... Uh, and, 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 and the task the task planning is like it's basically in the company it's like um, an internal audit basically uh, I'm talking here about the cost imagine that within your company you want to do you want to conduct an internal audit the internal audit as a diff, uh, 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 as opposed to uh, the task planning process is that the internal audit actually uh, scrapes all your financial information and to see if it complies uh, with the SEC, right? Or with the GAP, if you are in the US. That's what they do. So they will check everything, if everything is done correctly. But they do that with the 
with the, in mind if you have done something wrong. As opposed to the tax strategy, the tax strategy is actually doing the same thing. The same thing, just that they do that with the IRS in mind, like with, with the intention of finding the opportunity for you to pay less taxes at the end of the year. That is actually what the tax planning, that, that, that planning is. Uh, and that's the reason why, that's the reason why uh, many times it will cost a lot. And that's also the reason why many business owners or every self-employed self people or even single or individual taxpayer will not go to a taxpayer because it costs a lot. It costs maybe 10 times just filing your taxes. You can, that's how you can see that it's more important. If you want, you want to file your taxes, if you pay 5000 If you pay five thousand, I mean five hundred, to file your taxes, you may you may find yourself paying up, even up to five thousand or four thousand to get a good and efficient tax planning. Right? You can see the difference. What is more efficient? What what will help you a lot? What will help you more? Between the 500 people here and 5,000 here, do you really think the person you pay 500 to file your taxes is doing the better job or you will get the better outcome than if you are invested 5,000? No. This is an investment. Your tax preparation is not an investment. Your tax preparation is like, it's like you are trying to be compliant with the law, right? You try to be compliant, the law. even though you're going to owe the government, even though you're not receiving no refund, you still have to spend this money right here. I'm just, I'm, I'm still bringing down the difference between tax profession, I mean tax preparation and tax planning. Over here, when you spend $500 or $600 or $1,000, I'm just putting a number like this. You spend your $500 to prepare your personal taxes or you spend, or you spend $1,000 to file for your businesses. You are just paying more money than this because it's more complicated to, I mean, to actually file it because there are so many, uh, you know, moving parts that we have to get together to actually prepare your taxes. Not because they are saving you in taxes. I just want you to know, not because they are saving you more in taxes. So, uh, unless they are or he's able to implement a tax strategy. I'm not going to go into all the tax strategy here. Some tax strategy that could be implemented just as if you have implemented them during the year. There are some, very few, unless the person does that in your taxes. If he doesn't, he's actually trying to see what is available. He's doing his maximum to see what is available to you but there is i mean there is a way that you cannot go beyond what you didn't anticipate it there's no way you can take it for you so if you're spending one thousand in your business to file your taxes you have to know that you should be spending ten thousand or maybe five or six thousand and see how much you'll be saving taxes right there's always opportunity of saving in taxes. That is what I want you guys to know. Whether you are an individual, um, just a taxpayer, individual taxpayer, or you are a business, there's always until you conduct, until you conduct a tax planning examination or consulting to reveal to you what is actually available to you. Okay. Until you do that, you will never know what's available to you. I'm not talking about what your friends, your sister, your mom told you. I'm talking about consulting. Or if you don't want to consult with a tax professional, go through the RS. The RS has a website, right? Check for your business. Check for all the crazy tax deductions that are available. Now, think about how you can structure, 
I'm talking about this is uh, the main type of task planning or waiting. Find out how to structure your business the way that you are able to actually take the credit that is available for you. The first thing to do is let me know what credit is available for you. Very few, if I, if, if, I don't know how many business owners are watching now, if I ask you, what are tax credit or tax deduction available to your area of business? If you are, I don't know, real estate, you are a carpenter, you are, uh, I don't know, a lawyer, if you are, just a, you, you know, you own a barbershop or a restaurant or a wedding salon, it doesn't matter what activity you are. What are the tax credits that are available to you? It doesn't matter whether you are able to take it or not. You have to take it. If you don't consult, spend time. In the life, you have to choose. If you have more time than money, spend your time to do the research. If you have more money than time, spend money. Because at the end, you are winning. Whether you are spending your time or you are spending the money, you get something. You are, you are winning. You are getting something. That's the advice I always give to my people. I will explain to you and I, will, I can also give you link to the IRS to actually take small time to check or to check into and see what are available to you. And that's the task planning, right? So there are three more or three main components of the task planning here, right? To save money. To save money, there are three main things that we do, that CPA do, uh, that tax professionals do, that someone who can actually do his tax by himself can do if he knows how to use them, right? There are three of them. The first thing is structuring. I see that already. I'm going to just put it on the board. Structuring. The first one is structuring. What does structuring mean? Structuring means that a tax planning can help you restructure a lot of stuff, a lot of situation. It could be that they are restructuring what? Your business entity. You could be restructuring uh, your business entity, right? You could be restructuring your business entity to make it uh, favorable for you, that's wise. You could be restructuring your expenses to make it more, uh, to make a deduction basically. You could be restructuring the, uh, an expense. The way you structure an expense can give you a credit that someone else are not able to take. Just because the person did this structure that expense according to something which is saving in taxes, right? For example, uh, when you are when you are purchasing a car, when you are purchasing a car, you can take like a deduction because of the car or the type of the car that you purchase. If you know that you are going to gain. $2,000 as a tax credit, you will structure this, your, your, that, that purchase of the car the way that you get this 2000 credit. That's basically what it means. So structuring is basically the main thing, the first thing, the first thing that uh, people will do to save in taxes. I'm just um, you know, sharing it just like this with everybody. Right, uh, an expense. Uh, I saw uh, one of the one, a video where someone was charged by the IRS one million dollars. Like the IRS re remove one million dollars deduction in his taxes, in his financial, in his income tax, income statement, because they said the expenses that she made was not. Uh, a business expense. They saw it as a, as a personal expense. 
Yeah, you know, on, in a business, you cannot combine personal expense and the business expense. They, they will remove it, and your 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 net income will increase. Your tax bill will increase as well. So a tax professional were, was able to actually structure this one million expense the way that it became a business expense. It was actually a one million. It was actually um, a yacht. So that person purchased a yacht. It was a real estate. Real estate uh, professional development. So they purchase a yacht, you know, yacht, like a boat, to go out on the sea and have fun and stuff. And he put it, she put it in your business as an expense, right? So what happened? Is that they remove it? But a good tax professional was able to actually structure and let the IRS know the reason why this could be a business expense. That's the structuring. Just the way that you structure something can give you an advantage that you will not receive if you don't do it. The other structuring is the retirement plan. You structure the structure of your retirement plan. As a business owner or as an individual, you have to have you know the structure of your retirement plan and know what which one is more uh, tax wise uh, favorable to you that's what you have to know and there are so many types of retirement account you have what is called traditional or hope array you have a self-employment 401k you have the simple array uh, simple array you have the self self array uh, you have so many different type of plan right retirement plan each retirement plan will have an advantage that is greater than the other one. You have to structure just by structuring them will give you a more uh, evidence in having or uh, applying or uh, implementing a good tax planning and save you in taxes. That is basically what it means. The other uh, the other uh, main factor here is, here is uh, Deduction. In your tax planning, you are taking deduction. Deduction you are taking sometimes are not uh, are not uh, as a, as a expense here. I have to put income, income as well. You can structure your income. But you can anticipate an income as you can you push you can push back an income. That's wise. You have to know all of that, right? Same thing for the expenses. You can anticipate an expense as well as you can push back an expense because you want to take advantage of the taxes, right? Um, on the deduction side, there are so many deductions that you need to know and plan in advance in order to take them there are so many deductions for each business there are deduction and the deduction if you don't plan you don't you don't even find it and at the end of the year it's not the time during the filing tax filing that your cpa will actually find the deduction that you will have implemented Find what you have done during the year to take a deduction. You will make sure that he can take the deduction that is or deductions that are available now for you. But the deduction that you have made during the year, right? By <laughs> I need to mute yes. some people. So uh, I said last week that one of the strategy on saving in taxes. Was what? If somebody remember last week, it was about putting family to work. That's a tax strategy. Because you see that you are going to have a lot of gross net profit. And how to make do that, you don't actually pay taxes on that. You put family to work, you put your son to work. If you put your son, you anticipate that you put your son to work and you spend 30000 that 30000 will be deductible. On your son, and he doesn't even have tax and payroll tax on it, right? 
Because some people will say, okay, oh, I don't want to hide my son because I don't want to hide this my wife because I'm going to pay the pay payroll on it. If somebody watches the last week video, he will see the advantages of hiring the family, right? So as you are hiring your son, we don't pay payroll tax on it. And I spend last week what payroll tax. That is a that's it, the strategy to be able to take a deduction. You're not going to work at the end of the year and say, okay, oh, please, can you claim that I pay my son forty thousand dollars? It's not it's just not possible. That's a deduction. Or more than that, or the structure here also comes to the uh, to how to structure the choice of your compensation, other compensation. At the end of the year, I say, oh, that type of remuneration of your partners are not helping you. It would have been better if you had used this type of compensation of the partner of the LSC, of the members, right? And we'll be like, oh, but why, why can you just consider that? No, you just cannot consider that. There has to be something that you have planned that your CPA will see all the financial situation and say, okay, you know what? One of the advice that I will give you guys is that if you change your compensation structure, this is what you will be able to get tax wise. This is how you will be safe at your company level and at your individual uh, level. We, we, we still see stuff. I, say, I just say what? Uh, this is the remuneration, compensation. And you will see, you will see uh, how what Amazon did. I have an example here to show you how Amazon, uh, what Amazon did, right? So those are deduction. The third one, right? That was what is credit. Is credit. If you know what you can get as a credit. You will conduct your business the way that you can take that credit. Basically, at the business side, at the business level, as well as at the, on the personal level. If you, if it depends on your area of activity, whether you are a teacher or a nurse or a lawyer or an accountant, what are credits available to you? Or your business is involved in, in the environment, what are credits available to you? What are the criteria? to be able to uh, take those credit. Those are what you need to consult a tax professional for. Any business activity, any individual is always available, is always able to take some type of credit. It doesn't matter what credit is. And those credit are mostly linked to your activity, to your business activity or your just daily living. Those credit are linked. They, for example, you, so, for example, I just say here that you are fixing your, your, your house. You fix your house. You fix your house because the house has a problem. But if you know what crazy you might get, if you use any different type of material to fix your house, you will try to use that material to fix your house. And not only you will deduct the cost of fixing your house, but you will also get a credit for the same activity. That means you purchase a house, which is all the cost of repair, and you got a credit. Two different things. Same thing for the car. We have some type, what is called uh, some type of uh, uh, environment-friendly uh, credit for people purchasing the car. If you purchase a car, and you have in mind, okay, you are concerned, okay, the company is purchasing a brand new car, or myself, I need to buy a brand new car. I'm, I'm, I'm done with those used cars and stuff. I need a brand new car. I have money for that. Or whether it's a cash or finance, I have money for that. So, if you know what could be available for you to you to get a car, you will actually shape your choice the way that you could actually take that crazy. So that is that is plan. I mean, failing to plan is planning to fail. That's what people say, right? If you don't, if you fail to plan, there's no way you can take the credit that you have taken. You have taken if you have planned. That is basically what it means. So those are the main pillars. Those are the main pillars 
that you have to the tax professional area those are the main one right i mean there are there are more but those are the main one that you focus on right to get to get that saving at the end of the year and all of those are implemented during the year most of them maybe one or two maybe don't even after the year passed right but you still have to consult with your tax professional for that and you will still have to pay him to implement that and there will be some limitation even uh, even though you have to take them because at the end of the year there's so limitation on what you can take some what, in, in what you can take in terms of tax planning compared to if you have implemented them at the beginning of the year because you have more homes right so those are the main one and i'm going to talk about amazon amazon on the 11.2 billion coffee Amazon made 11.2 billion coffee. 11.2 billion coffee. I think maybe it was more than that. On that, they paid zero dollars on income tax. Zero dollars on income tax for 2019. 11, 11 billion coffee. How much coffee did you make last year? If you are a business owner, can you tell me how much income tax you pay? Right? How much or how much did you save? I can say that he saved everything that he was supposed to pay. Why? Because it is a plan. A some plan are having done for years. That means you implement a plan today because you know it will give you results in the next two, three, four, even five years. Yes, that's that's planning. And that's how that's what Amazon exactly did. That's what it is. And an example of what he was able to take. He took 100, he took what it was more than 100 million on what is called net operating loss. So Amazon was incurring losses in the past because he has a plan that when you are incurring loss, it's because most of the time it's not that the company is not good, but you are you are not focusing on making profit now. The company is actually selling. But maybe you are also investing even more than what you are making, right? It could make you be in the loss. But you know when it reaches the peak, you will get like a, a, a crazy result, right? So Amazon took hundreds billion, hundreds million, hundreds million on what is called net operating loss. Net operating loss just means that it has a net loss during the year for a couple of years, right? Amazon took 419 million for what is called R&D credit. R&D credit, research and development credit. Amazon took 419 million on research and development credit. Why? Because they knew, they knew or uh, the team of CPA and big accounting firm knew that Amazon is doing the tech industry. And the tech industry, this is why they have. So they focus not to make profit today, to make profit more profit next year, but they focus on research and development. That's why they have developed everything that you guys see out there. Amazon is on everything, right? They manufacture everything. People think Amazon is just a, a, a marketplace where people come and sell. But Amazon does 10 times more than you think Amazon is doing to make money. That's the reason why they're number one now. Right? So Amazon did what is called 1 billion on deduction for stock based compensation. Stock based compensation. 1 billion. The B, a big B right here. Amazon took one point B uh, stock based compensation. What does that mean? It basically means that he makes money, but instead of paying people, he just gives them a share of the company to his employees. Right? He just uses stocks to pay his employees. But he's taking one billion expense, even though he didn't spend a dime. Can you imagine that? Instead of giving money to them, 
he's giving them he's he's giving them a piece of a piece of the company that's probably that but the issue his goal now is to actually make pay zero dollar or pay the least amount in taxes that was his goal that's the reason why he did that and you know he can also buy back those shares. He give it to them. Next year, he can also buy them back, right? If if he really want those shares, he can he can pay back and buy those shares back, right? So, so those are basically the area of uh, of uh, expertise or the area of uh, the area where people can actually save in taxes. Okay, I just show you. Those are the three main structure. The payment area where uh, CPAs and accounting will focus to help you implement a good tax planning. Okay, on the structure here, on the entity structure, that says structuring. You can structure your entity structure. I'm going to give an example here. I give an example of expense, uh, uh, expense, expense, expense structure when somebody can actually uh, structure the expense at. A, a personal expense that becomes a business expense. I just say that here. Now you can structure a uh, an entity of your business the way that is more favorable to you tax wise. And I'm going to uh, show you share with you uh, a case study where you can actually see how just by moving by converting your LLC LLC structure to C Corp to C Corp structure just for tax for taxes can help you save more money than you can even imagine. Alright? Yes, we're going to do that that's case study. But as I'm just cleaning the board, if someone has a question, he can ask. If someone has a question, you can ask before we proceed. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, you said. Yes. You say. Um, Who is talking, sorry? Amazon made a profit of 11.2 billion. Yeah. Billion, not million, right? Yeah, billion, yeah. Yes. And um, do you have any. This is, it's just mind boggling that they made. 11.2 million and they did not pay a penny <laughs> in that system. But the number you just gave, you say they put 1.1 million in small, in the stock market, whatever it was. Yeah, they call it stock bank compensation. Yeah. They just pay, instead of giving money, they give the stock. And 400 million dollars is something and another 100 million. I mean, that adds up to just barely, not even 2 billion. Do you, do you have any idea what where the other how do they just that leave nine about nine billion in profit? How do they write that off? How do you have any breakdown of the, those numbers where how they were able to still not pay any tax on the nine when something billion dollar there? Okay, those are just a few deductions that I just put on the board. There are so many other credits that the credit is what is that normally uh, on, on let's say on this morning on the 11 billion 11 billion let's say your taxes here will be imagine when they say you save in taxes it means that on that billion 11 billion you should have paid I don't know maybe two billion as taxes, that's what you mean. You should have paid two billion for taxes for this level of income, but you came up with credit. The credits actually deduct directly dollar for dollars your tax bill. When you come up with a credit, it deducts this amount dollar for dollar. That means if you have a credit for two billion, then your tax becomes zero. If you have what is called net operating losses, I just said that they, they took hundreds of million. Of net operating loss. Net operating loss means that you have one, two billion of profit. If I have nine million of, of net operating loss, I'm going to deduct this here out of this 
these taxes before I see what I have to pay. Do you see that? Francis? Yes. Do you, you see that? That means the net operating loss is that this year you are accumulating a, credit, a, a loss. That's not a problem. Next year, so on. But you know when you're going to take it because your strategy will put you as a trillion of goods in 2019. That's a projection. And I have a team of, I don't know how many, how many dozen of CPA working on that. So they, they know, it's not, they're not surprising. They know that they will hit this, this year. This is what they will take. Of course, they will adjust accordingly every day, every year. When the landscape, economic landscape changes, the law change, they, accord, they, 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 they modify accordingly until they hit this. That's the goal. And I'm pretty sure next year, I'm not sure they're going to take the, the, to pay zero dollar because unless they are also implement other strategy just to pay less tax next year. So the point is that I cannot, if you want, go online. Yeah. Those financial statements are actually uh, available online. When you are a public company, all your financial statements are, 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 are public. You are a public company. I mean, you can see all the deductions. If somebody wants to see, go to the FCC, try to, to, to pull out the financial statement for, for Amazon or, or Apple or what, whatever company you see. You will see what they are taking. They're not, Amazon is the only company. I think I run a, a, a live where I was showing at least seven companies. Seven among the big, I mean, those billion dollar companies who pay zero dollar in tax. Amazon is well because they are the bigger company now in the world. That's when they're talking about them. So there are many of <laughs> big companies that, I think uh, this company, Verizon, I don't know what company it was, also pay zero dollar in taxes. There's this big, uh, uh, this big uh, airline company. I forget the name, also pay zero dollar in taxes. It's, it doesn't just come like all of a sudden. It's a strategy. If we take we take, we're talking about Amazon, a billion, a trillion dollar company. What about you? Maybe you're making let's say nine hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars a year. That's that's not even your portion, that's your that's your most sales. Or you're making a million dollars in sales. Don't you think? that you are more favorable to take a credit than somebody making one trillion dollar uh, uh, as growth sales? Yes, you are. You just need to invest. Because at the end of this, uh, this million, you will be fine yourself. The average company, by the way, the tax, the, I'm going to show here what is the C-Corp tax rate. The corporate tax is 21%. That means 21% of this is what? It's just 200 210,000 $210, dollars. You are paying 200,000 dollars as taxes. That's what it means. Over here, you make 1 million, you pay 200,000 tax dollars. That's a, this is your profit, okay? If this is your profit, you are paying 1 million, uh, 200,000 dollars. Somebody is making 2 billion profit, but he's paying 0 dollars. Who is paying more taxes? Of course, you. And if, if you are asked to invest even $20,000, it will be worth it to invest $20,000 and know that you can save this amount and maybe pay only uh, a, quarter, a, quarter, a quarter of that. Yes, it will, be, it will be a good investment. This is what, and this is on the business side. On the individual side, it's the same thing. I show you sometime here, last time, that if you are an individual, if you are an individual, taxpayer individual, you are making more than seventy thousand dollars a year, more than seventy thousand dollars a year, and you don't have no tax planning. I just say what tax planning is: is to actually initiate an action with the tax saving in mind and do that during the year. If you have not done that, you are paying, you are overpaying taxes. No question asked. Why? Because the bigger expense most of the time is the rent.